Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day, a gray day. It's starting to drizzle a little bit on the edges, and pretty soon I won't be able to sit on the porch. <clears throat> but it, it's going to rain much of the day, they say, which is nice. It's lovely. We need the rain. It's, we need spring rains. It's not been raining as much as it usually does, and that's a problem. But it's supposed to rain today. Um, I just got back from my walk. I'm lucky to have gotten a walk in originally that said it was going to be raining this morning and I thought I wasn't going to be able to but then I got up and they pushed back the start time of the rain so I managed to squeeze in a little over a mile which is nice gets me going in the morning um this morning my thoughts go to as always lots of things there's so much going on with the coronavirus situation people trying to change the perimeters and parameters of the quarantine, um, perhaps inadvisedly. But I, I don't want to talk about that right now. Instead, I want to talk about the way in which we as individuals get drawn to situations or to other people that can be terribly impactful on us to the degree that we become absorbed in them and in those situations. Uh, the idea of becoming absorbed in strangers or in other people um, might seem weird when we're in quarantine. Even our loved ones are people we're used to, we spend time with all the time. So our absorption in them is not the same as when we first get involved. But think about if you're out walking like I was this morning and suddenly you see something just stunning, a sunrise, a beautiful flower, and you pause and stay and wait and absorb, experience, watch. None of it has to be so active. You're just there doing. Those kind of things are really important and have, to me, great poetic value, as do the kind of things that occupy us, the inner commitments we have to our work, to our doing. How many times have you um, asked people not to bother you when you're working, when you're doing stuff? I mean, my mother would get so absorbed <laughs> that it was almost useless to talk to her when she was working. Um, I don't even know if she heard us. But she's not the only one. I'm afraid, like mother, like son, in some ways. Um, those kind of things are important. So I wanted to write about that in a poem. But I also came across a relatively new poetic form called the Golden Shovel. And the Golden Shovel is, was invented by a, a poet named Terence Hayes. The rules of the golden shovel are that you uh, basically, not basically, are that you follow, take a line of a poem, an existing poem by somebody else, and you take that line. And each one of the words in that line should become a word in your poem. Uh, that is to say, the end of a line, the last word of a line in your poem. And if the poem, ha you, the line you borrow from has nine lines, nine words, so you have a nine line poem, and so on. It seems fairly strict, and in a way it is, and it can be quite bothersome to write in form because it constrains what you can think and how you can work. But on the other hand, there's also something challenging about it and fun. So this is a golden shovel. It's built after the last line of Anne Carson's poem, On the End. Her line reads, Rembrandt wakens you just in time to see matter stumble out of its forms. It's a wonderfully abstract line and gave me quite a challenge to use to write. So here's a shovel, a golden shovel, built on Anne Carson's poem. It is entitled, The Matter. I almost fall on Rembrandt. I leave a hall. The night watch wakens before me, stunned. I stay and forget you are waiting for me in a cafe just 
barely in spring sun. It shines on your diary in which you write and write as if time were the object of life's being. To be as important to you as what you see and write in that book, there is the matter. I forgot. I did not lift myself to stumble from the museum in time. I go out into the sun whose rays are full of your writing, but you are gone. It's too late. I missed being part of your forms. Well, I hope that today none of you miss important events in your life, but that you also enjoy the pleasure of the things that draw your attention, that pull you in. Obviously, the beauty in the world around you. Thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow.